Welcome to Computer Specialist. This is Computer Repair. Um, this is uh, we're going to be showing you today how to replace a spindle drive with a solid state drive to make the computer faster. Uh, this is a customer's computer. Uh, this is a Dell Inspiron 15-3552. Currently has a 500 gigabyte older spindle drive. We're going to replace it with a Samsung. 250 uh, gigabyte solid state drive. That's a 870 Evo. Um, basically, this machine is a Celeron edition. You know, not the fastest machine, but we're, customers just look, looking to speed it up. Um, somebody be wondering why would you put a high end Samsung drive like this in here? Um, it just happened to be on sale. Uh, same price as the other one, so the customer is going to benefit from that. Uh, first, we'll show you power on the laptop to show you the model of it. Uh, this machine is F2. Uh, right after you turn on, just have F2 a few times. You will get into the BIOS. Um, inside the BIOS there, you'll see the model. So it's Inspiron 15 3552. You'll see the hard drive is the right there where it says uh, first HDD. So it's ST500. Basically, it's a 500 gig, um, which we'll be pulling out. I'll show you. Uh, this model has a 4 gig uh, worth of memory. It's a Celeron. Uh, where, you know, you could upgrade when we get a part two you could upgrade it to eight gig uh you know we're not recommending it for the customer because we're just trying to keep it as cheap as possible and it won't make too much of a deal but you know it's also you know something you want to do you can do it. uh first thing you start is you grab um you know if you have an iFixit fix it kit with all the tools it's good if not you might have something plastic guitar pick is good something plastic you do what not want to use metal um uh, metal in these situations can mess up the keyboard in this particular model you uh, can do a lot of damage by using metal. So you want to use something plastic on plastic. Basically, you see these little notches right there. That's how it's locked down. So start over on one side. Um, basically, get the guitar pick or in there. Uh, you're going to run along. Uh, there's no screws holding the physical keyboard down. So you're just going to basically run this under here. You like to use my other hand as you're doing it to make sure it doesn't go back down. Um, go around there. You, do not, you want to try to not bend the keyboard too much. You know, you don't want to yank up on it. Let the plastic do all the work um you know if you turn it on accidentally like, you, like i did shut off uh just basically folds up comes out latch up see how i was saying up here so remember that when you put it back that little latch pops back um you can use that or use your fingernail um lightly shouldn't be too hard once that's up just take this and slowly walk it walk it out and there you have it um so now we're here on the top. So basically, um, if you have a magnet or I fix it magnet, you know, these which, which I would call top top screws. We keep it real simple. You're gonna have one, two, three, four, five. Um, these are all the same size screws. Um, for people out there that are new, um, if you look at the thing, they're labeled on here 2.5, you know, basically L5. Um, that's just basically the length dimensions you know they use different stuff so if you see a different number on you know different brand laptops you know they're using in this case they're all five so you don't really have to pay attention where they come out but you'll pull all, all them out and um you know put them off to the side on there um this model um because we're going to just be doing a hard drive um you're just going to take this is going to come out with the bottom of the case so you want to you know same thing push the latch back walk it out I'm done all right at this point we're done with that so we're gonna shut the screen uh I'm gonna flip it over uh, pop the battery out latch over battery comes out remember when you put it in this way snap down uh put that off to the side and this has a ba one battery screw here so once again you know on your magnet or wherever you may have you can use a piece of paper if you don't have a magnet i would uh label that battery just one battery screw uh next i like to go with the cd-rom get that out of the way this little tiny screw is the only one different on the bottom so take that out. Once you have that out, a uh, little trick on these. You can see the ROM is exposed right here. So these sometimes don't come out easy, but if you w press it here and wiggle it, right there, it gets it out for you a lot easier. Pull that off. Um, put this off to the side. Um, you know, label the other one CD-ROM screw. You're also going to notice three little screws here. So basically, um, one, two, three. So those have to come out. Those hold the bottom to the top. Uh, people, once again, if you're new to this, that could be something that could drive you nuts when you're trying to pop the bottom off. And it won't come off. It's going to be that. 
These three screws, I believe it'll be the same as the one that takes the one out, but I have to be safe. I'd put them marked off in a CD-ROM closer to each other. You know, um, I think the other one has a slightly bigger head on there, but they will fit. At this point now, we'll go with the bottom screws. Um, these are all the same size. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Right. The other part where it gets a little tricky, uh, especially with this model and some of the HPs, these two screws hold the hinges in. So you got to be careful when you open up the screen now, there's not much support left and you don't want to crack out the hinge mounts and like that. So you want to be really careful. You want to put most of your pressure right here. And at this point, you want to kind of get on a ledge here. And I'm going to do this to kind of show you. And once again, you're going to get your plastic on plastic again. You're going to stick it in here. And at this point, um, you know, run along. Any plastic on plastic go along the, the crack like that. So you're going to just keep prying up. Should come off pretty easy. Um, once again, if it feels it's not coming off, first thing to check for is the screws. Uh, but as you can see, it's coming off pretty quick. I believe this machine was taken apart before. Um, but, you know, anything should come out. Um, as you see, as I take this off, there's the ribbon up top. So the first time we did one of these, it drove us nuts. Um, but, you know, it you, you learn from doing a lot of these, uh, but there it is. So that's why you want to have it off. At this point, you want to put this off to the side. So um, now we're going to basically check it out, the machine. So as you can see, it only has one memory stick on there. So if you wanted to bump it up to eight, you'd have to take that four out. Uh, you have to put it eight. Um, for people out there, uh, you know, if you want to check the BIOS battery, I know this one's to be good, but, you know, that's where you put your voltmeter on it. You should get three, three volts. Uh, might be a good chance to replace that if the laptop's pretty good. Um, these are the hinges that I was talking about. So see, these are pretty much, you know, the bottom casing holds these on. So if you don't be careful with opening up and closing these hinges, um, you know, in this case, we really don't have to. But if you're doing other work to it, or screen work, really, really important. Um, these will crack out. Um, but for the purpose of the video, we're here to replace this. This is the hard drive right here. So uh, one of the features on this machine is that the hard drive is not direct. It's on a ribbon. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, pop that up, walk that out. First thing you should do is so that way you don't damage that ribbon. Uh, this model only has two hard drive screws. So you're going to do one. Uh, once again, you would put this labeled hard drive. If you have a magnet, write it in there, a piece of paper. Two. All right. At that point, this comes out, and this is basically a hard drive cut. Uh, four screws. This is standard on most. Um, what I like to do is take these screws out right here, around the spot. You know, you don't really need to put them on a magnet because the next step is going to be putting this drive in. But uh, this is a Seagate thin drive. You know, not a bad drive, but you know, technology-wise, old. And to me, wouldn't use a machine without a solid state these days. Just you know, such a better option and speed. So there's a four screws. Um, what I would do before taking this out of here. I would go take solid state that you're replacing it with. Um, walk this ribbon off. So this just pulls out. Um, this shouldn't fight you too much. So if you're if you're taking this off right here and this say this doesn't come off good, um, you know, it's one of those where wiggle wiggle, but don't pull on the ribbon. You don't want to damage the ribbon side. But basically, you want to get off there. Um, as you can see, it pulled off there. You want to leave it just the way it is. Um, you want to line this drive up, basically to match. The ports on there so as this drive comes out right you throw it up to the side this one goes in the same um you can put it in backwards uh you know where the ribbon does you know stuff like that uh, i've done it before um that's why i like to do that um when you put these screws back in uh go easy with them you don't need to snug tight them yet just so they all line up sometimes the mounting holes on these screws are you know pretty tight so if you tighten one up and it's a little crooked you know the other three aren't going to go in but once you get to the fourth one then you get snug tight it um don't need to go crazy on these 
uh, just you know put them out there once you get that there once again this goes on uh, nice and easy put it on like that that's good and I'm gonna put this back down here and uh, again this so this slides in basically with a little bit of force you know wiggle it right in there that lines lined up right there you'll see those that line and then once you get there you just press down on it snaps on this at this point now uh south state's in so now we're going to reverse do whatever they need to do it's the same thing i like to start to start the thread on there put this one in put that all the way down once again if you want the memory you know look at the speed of the memory um you know you want I can show you real quick you know this is for the memory but when we're at this part that those latches comes off right there and then if you look on there uh so basically it's pcl so it's pc3l 12800 so so basically you got to make sure it's pc3l um as you see right here it says only there so this is the eight gig so basically, if you, you'd have to buy, I mean, sorry, this is a four gig. You'd have to buy an eight gig to upgrade the memory. Like I said, on this model with the thing, with the Celeron thing. So basically, you put it in on an angle, 45 degree angle, make sure it's in there good, and just snap it down. So there, we have the drive in there. Um, when I have it apart, one thing I like to do is tighten up these hinge screws. Uh, they can take some torque. Uh, they loosen up over the years, and when they become loose, this one right here was a full turn loose, so that's good. Um, you can't hit up the motherboard screws. Um, to me, that's not too big of a deal. All right, so now we're at the port, uh, which is the fun part of this model. So, <laughs> so real port. So what you got to do with this, you got to feed this cable through here um, like it was when you take it out. So really important you do that because if you don't, you won't get there. So the way you do that is you just hold up here before you put it on there. You just stick it through there, and then you got it through. Lower this down and line it up and go around. Once again, and wiggle it. Yeah, snap it down. Uh, you do want to make sure this is on before you put any screws in. So at least this way, uh, you know. So now we're gonna start right like before. I'm gonna go around with these nine screws. Um, until some time while I'm putting these screws in. Uh, so this one we're showing you how to put the drive in. We're we have videos and we're gonna have more videos to show you how to clone over your data from this drive. You know, using a USB 3 cable, which is, uh, I got one right here, this just made me think of that. Uh, so basically, this USB SATA on in. So you can buy these cheap on Newegg.com, uh, you know, $10, I think, or even eBay. Uh, that and the right software, and you can boot it up and off the USB port, put the software on a thumb drive, and clone your stuff over. And basically, you have the speed of the solid state, but all your data is intact, all your settings, your wallpapers, and everything. Um, we also have videos for people out there who say you want to just reload it with the solid state. You can do that. Um, reload from scratch. We're going to show you how to do that in some of our videos. You can do that, and then you can just transfer your documents over. Um, and we'll also have videos to show you how to wipe this off externally. So if you don't have anything you need on here, or you have everything on the cloud, but you want to get rid of this drive or possibly sell it on eBay. Now, this is a 500 gig. Um, some of these models come with one terabyte. Uh, believe it or not, they sell, we sell them on eBay, they go for $35, $40 still, uh, which is insane because that's the price of of a 500 gig, well, you know, 250 gigs south, the drive we just put in here. So, it's almost like an even swap. You know, I know you lose the size, but most people aren't using that kind of storage anyway. So, these screws you're going to put in, you're going to snug them down pretty good. Um, you don't have to go crazy, you know. Uh, these mounts in here are only held in by plastic, so... At the end of the day, you don't want to get too crazy with those. But you do want to put them in. All right, so now we're back to the C-ROM. So we're going to go with the three little screws in the C-ROM. That's the three off the edge here to go to the bezel. Um, those just torque down. Don't to be too crazy with those. Okay, so at that point now, 
So if you have the magnet or the paper set up, we have the screws. Basically, what's nice about it, as, as you're going, you can glance over and see. You know, right now, all I have is the battery screw and the top screw. So this is the CD-ROM screw I'm going to put in. Um, as we, so what, one of the most important things are, you know, um, some people always, you know, you see other videos, they'll do the top first or whatever. Um, the reason why I like to do this first, getting these two screws is important so you don't break anything with the hinges. We get a lot of people, um, there's a battery screw going to go in, just one battery screw on here. We get a lot of customers that bring in their laptops and because uh, they worked on them. And part of the reason is the hinges broke out and turns out they took it apart and, you know, damaged it, trying to upgrade their memory or something like that. Happens a lot. So this battery goes in backwards kind of, so you snap that back side down. That goes, you'll see the latch go, and that's in. So now the screws are in for the hinges. So now at this point, we can open up regular. Before we put the keyboard back in, uh, get this in once again. Basically, just put it back in there, you know, wiggle it. And you basically want that line. You'll see when it goes in. Um, sometimes, like I said, these things are to fight you this and that, but for the most part, it shouldn't be too hard. Um, if you feel that it's not in right, Basically, just go and reset it, as you can see I did, and, and then it went right back in the second time. So, you know, we didn't take these apart, but you kind of want to double check them. Really important now, you're going to put together the top with the fire screws. So, uh, these, no certain order on these. Uh, once again, something I like to do with this, when you have the metal that shifts, um, snug them all in first. So, you, either, you, know, you can run your finger along the edge here where the, the clips were. Um, Make sure everything's lined up properly uh, here. All right, and when you get to the last screw, torque that down. Torque that down. Torque that down. And there should be five of these. And that, this is actually the last screw. All right, good. Now the keyboard, I'm gonna have to make sure you have the right way. Dell does a pretty cool thing, and they go up. Um, you can actually put it in backwards. Um, so this is nice. Tells you up. Uh, um, for people also new at this, um, you might say, "Oh, I don't remember something." You know, that should have probably showed you early on, and you know, you don't need to do it once you do a lot of these. But um, take a picture. You know, when you take this apart, snap a picture down. You'll see the screw holes. You'll see stuff, so you can go back to that photo to see. Um, but once again, you're gonna put this in. Um, you're gonna walk. You're gonna, Make sure this latch is all the way back, which it should be. And then you're going to get it in. You're basically going to get it in there. Now, what happens with this, too? Um, so, basically, as you see, there's a lot. Of, right up. So, if you if you, if it's not reaching, you know, move it to where you feel comfortable. Um, it's just to get this in. Um, this, to me, is always the biggest pain in the butt part. Because what happens is uh, you can see that things flare up a little bit right there. So, um, at the end of the day, it, it, it wants to go in, but it's... Like it's kind of stuck on there. So basically, so what you got to do is you got to flatten it down. And like I said, this was definitely taken apart before. Um, I can see the way this ribbon is. Um, there, there it goes. But finally pop. See, that's what's nice. So, yo, know, it doesn't go in first. Do it again. Don't jam it in. Um, it's just going to make it worse. I just had to take it out, flatten it out a little bit. You know, whoever worked on before kind of frayed it up a little bit. But now it's in. And then most important, latch it down. There. That just lays on there, believe it or not. And you just make sure it's kind of laying there loose. Uh, these, there's one, two, three, four, five, six of these. Make sure they're lined in there. You can accidentally put it on some of these models, put it up like that. and So make sure all six are in there. You want to put that in at an angle. And then basically snap it down. Work it along the top. And work along the side. And then we'll go around it one more time. And then sometimes it's good to go around. All right. So we're gonna turn it on one last time. F2. The way you know you did everything right is if you look on there and you see Samsung SSD 250 gigs. So that's good. And the fact that it turned on and the memory is all there, everything else is good. So there's your video um, for your Dell Inspiron 15-3552. Um, if you're looking to clone reload, check out some of our videos or some are up already, or if not, they will soon be up. Uh, but for now, um, that's it. Have a good day.